Despite the toy industry being literally fun and games, it's also big business. And for those of us who are the adult collectors, which is probably you and me watching and making videos on this channel, well, for us it's all about collecting and having complete sets and wanting to have access to our toys, and that means, well, breaking into retail. Now, breaking into retail is pretty much exactly like breaking into a safe, except that it's completely not nor is it like breaking into a home. Breaking into retail is about getting your product placed in aisle, and I can tell you it's not easy. Pretty much every single toy company in the entire world wants to be in the Target and Walmart toy aisle because, well, if you're in the Target and or Walmart or RIP Toys R Us, thank you Bain Capital, well, it means you're going to sell a lot more product, which means most toy companies are focused on what's called a path to market or a go-to market strategy. Now, there are some shortcuts, of course. If you happen to own or are a very large movie studio and you have a new blockbuster film that may even have a history of selling toys, well, you basically have lined up your stars, and in that case, you're going to go directly to the toy aisle and collect your $200. But luckily, or unfortunately, rather, not everyone is a giant studio, and most toy companies are actually rather small. Sure, we know the big ones, but there are literally thousands of small toy companies that would kill to be in the aisle. And Mattel has recently done an amazing feat. They have brought back a defunct dead brand, Masters of the Universe, and now have about six feet in aisle. And we're talking about multiple toy lines here. We're talking about Masters of the Universe Origins. We're talking about Masters of the Universe Masterverse, which is, of course, tied into the Netflix show. And speaking of Netflix show, the other Netflix show also has a toy line. And then there's the minis, which... It's crazy to see those at retail. And then, of course, you can't forget the Mega Blocks. So there's a lot of He-Man product at retail. Now, in the 80s, obviously, Masters of the Universe was huge, and we all remember it being a dominant force in our childhood and at retail. It's not the case like that anymore. We tend to get skewed by our memories, which are rose-colored, or in my case, purple-colored. But there's been also a lot of failure. In fact, He-Man has had more failure than success. Almost every single He-Man line has ended in failure, even the original line. That's why we haven't seen them continuously at retail. The last time He-Man was at retail in 2000 and X, well, <laughs> that's not a year, 2001, they came with videotapes, so that shows you how long it's been since a He-Man line has been at retail. All right. Knowing that, and there are many reasons why the line left retail, I mean, obviously just because it didn't sell well, and this puts it on what's called the D-list. Not like celebrity D-list, but D-listing is what it's called. When we did Masters of the Universe Classics on Maddie Collector selling it online, we tried to get it to retail, but nobody wanted it. Because at the time, it was thought of as a brand that doesn't work. So retail was like, yeah, not for us. Believe me, despite what some of the other YouTube toy channels say, nobody wanted it. We tried. And getting it back on top, getting it back to retail, is a huge challenge. And I have to applaud Mattel because they took the chess strategy and essentially played the long game in order to get their four, five, six feet in aisle. And this means really looking ahead at the future and thinking about a strategy. It's like planting seeds in a garden or planting human skulls in a dumpster. So how did they do this? Well, and why are they doing this, especially when there's questions of ownership and the idea that Motu isn't going to be owned by Mattel by the end of the year? Believe me, just Google Motu ownership and it tells you right there. It's currently co-owned by Universal and Mattel with all rights reverting to Universal in 2023. So there's limited time for Mattel. Yes, yeah, the ticking crack! And the question, well, why would you put all this time and energy into a brand you don't own anymore, at least you won't by the end of the year, well, heck, if you had a license for Star Wars and you had a year left to own it and make money off of toys, wouldn't you want to maximize that and put out as many toys as possible? That's exactly what's happening. So even with the license reverting to Universal, and, you know, hey, maybe things have changed, maximizing the ability to sell He-Man toys while you still have rights to it is very uh, advantageous. And getting product placed in the boys' action aisle is not easy. Just look at Marvel Legends, which has recently been booted out due to poor sales. Now, of course, there's alternate placement, things like the collector spot behind electronics, and then there's other things like uh, what's called sort of pop-up mid-aisle 
incremental placement, such as this toady winner received, and then of course there's end caps that are bargained with and usually settled almost a year before they're set. So while there's multiple places you can be, being a peg actually in the aisle is the golden goose, or as I like to say, the golden ferret. And this is where the money is made. So knowing that Mattel has a vested interest of maximizing the license while they have control over it, how did they do this? Honestly, brilliant. They started off by launching one Motu line, Motu Origins, and they started off by launching it at one channel, Walmart. Why did they do this? Well, probably because Walmart was the only one willing to take it, and that was probably because Mattel was willing to give it to them exclusively for a window. That's kind of how the bargain works. We'll, we're willing to take the brand as long as you give us something in return. And you'll notice that all of the Motu items sold at Walmart, especially for the first year or so with this relaunch, have all been what are looked at or called incremental placement meaning these are not permanent fixtures. They're just placed temporarily to increase the number of SKUs sold. They can then be trashed, removed, and there's no need to redo the aisle. Now, eventually, Motu was able to transition actually into the aisle and expand from Walmart to Target once Walmart's exclusive window ended. And Origins then had new lines added to the retail placement, or statement as it's called. Things like the multiverse figures, and things like the new CGI Netflix show. Knowing the entertainment was coming about a year after, classic I'm sorry, Classics, Origins was more or less a placeholder put in order to secure a larger placement once the entertainment was ready. And quickly expanding my entering or expanding with the additional lines. Now you'll also notice that a lot of He-Man product has been on sale. Like, a lot of it and many, many times. I mean, 50% off is a big savings. Anytime you see a sale, it's funded by the toy company, which basically means the company is paying the difference between the sale price and the regular price in order to keep the product on shelf. Clearance is different. Clearance is when the re retailer just wants to get rid of the product as quickly as possible in order to make room for product that's going to sell better. But a sale, that is essentially securing placement because you're really paying for it. You're basically purchasing the sales or the dollar volume needed to keep a toy line in aisle. And why would a toy company do this? Well, there's a lot of reasons. And for Motu, again, because they only have a few months at this point left of total ownership of the brand, maximizing it means maximizing your potential profit. So it makes sense to want to maintain the brand at retail for as long as possible while you have ownership of it, and when the brand isn't selling well enough on its own, well, you start funding sales. Because again, sales are essentially the toy company taking the role of the customer and purchasing their own product by paying the difference in the SRP to the sale price. This is going to keep the product doing the number of turns, the velocity needed to maintain peg space. Once you drop below the velocity that a toy store, or rather a big box store with a toy aisle, these are not toy stores, so they have requirements of how many units per week have to sell. And the sale price essentially allows the toy company to make up this difference and keep the product on shelf, even when toy companies, or toy stores rather, are looking to remove it because it's not doing the velocity. Mattel did a brilliant job keeping He-Man at retail this year. I'm excited to see what happens in the future. I hope it stays, and I hope you'll share this video with others because, well, we all collect toys and it's always fun to share knowledge. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the comments section. I do try. I know I've been slipping up lately. All right, thank you again. I'll see you guys next time.